I don't think we've covered a subclass that is well as well designed, as interesting, and as like fun and well put together as genius. Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West. And today is another, what is it? Warlock Wednesday. Warlock Wednesday. And this is a good got, one. We got a good one for you today. Yeah. Uh, it feels extra good coming off the tales of Mastermind Rogue. Yeah. We talked about Fiend last time, too, and that one's got some stinker features. Uh, this is the option I most anticipate playing. I want to play this really badly. Unfortunately, I also really wanted to play College of Spirits Bark. So it's going to be a bit before I get to like give this thing a good run. But um, especially because I'm going to end up DMing so many more times in between now and the next time I get to play. But hey, this is such a cool, sweet little option. And it gives you so much build diversity. There's so many archetypes that can do stuff with this. Oh, oh I love this thing. <clears throat> All right, let's get into it. Okay, so this works for the four genies presented in the Monster Manual, um, which are based off of varying cultures, different interpretations, a lot of Indian inspiration, I think. Um, I don't know the super big historical connotations of them, but you can pick uh, one of four genies. You get either a Dao, a genie, an Ifrit, or a Merid. Um, my pronunciation also may not be great, because I didn't research this ahead of time like I probably should have. Anyway, uh, they represent different elements. So Dao is earth, genie is air, Ifrit is fire, and Merid is water. And the entire rest of this option is sort of reflecting around you getting specific options that are tailored to those elements which not only makes this great as like a you know i want to have a genie patron it also just makes it any kind of elementalist like if you want to worship the evil element the elder elemental eye like from the prince of the apocalypse campaign from the wizard of the coast made you can do that with this you can just say okay the ultimate evil eye lord of fire elemental boss thing that is just going to be a reskinned version of freedy easy peasy and you can play a full in fire kind of warlock with that you can go in on merids and do deep sea like maybe you don't like fathomless you don't like the tentacles you want it to be like really deep ancient aquatic uh civilizations like marrow or something like an atlantean kind of character go in on merid with water you can do a whole bunch of sweet stuff with that um i'm a big fan oh yeah this is a this is a banger of a subclass yes I really want them to make more like this where it is like kind of five four subclasses in one. Like, ah, it's so sick. Because your expanded spell is the first place you really see it. So this well, is... Oh, I mean, beyond that, beyond the uh, diversity here, the, I mean, it just on the whole, you get great features. Whatever you choose. Absolutely. Uh, you start with expanded spell list that varies for each option. I don't know if we want to spend the whole video talking about 20 spells. Um <laughs> We can kind of blitz through them if you like. These are yeah. important because the Warlock spell slots aren't that great. So first level, all of them get with this. All of them get detect. Uh, how do I frame this? Okay, let's do it this way instead. We'll do all of the ones that based get, and then we can do all of the Dao, all the Genie, all the Afrit, all the Merit. That'll be probably an easier way to conceptualize this. Yeah. So, all right. Just all Genies. Can get Detect Evil and get, Good. Right. They can get Phantasmal Force their second level. Create Boon Water is their third level. Phantasmal Killer is their fourth level. Creation is their fifth level. There is also a bonus ninth level spell. And that's Whoa. Wish. There it Ooh. is. Yeah, you can get Wish if you want. Uh, and the rest of those are kind of crap. So we can move into the good <laughs> options, which come from the actual subclasses you get. So Dao gets Sanctuary, Spike Growth, Meld into Stone, Stone Sheep, and Wall of Stone. And this kind of sets them up as like a defensive area control supportive warlock really like spike growth i really like stone shape believe it or not it's kind of a neat little short rest ability that you use in different circumstances before you're resting wall of stone is really cool here i, I know like your thoughts wall of stone, yes oh uh, yeah, yeah i mean you know i like wall of stone and uh big fan of spike growth the rest yeah, sanctuary is sanctuary is notably bad because it, it it doesn't scale and you only get two and you slots, can't do so... anything yeah um I'm not high on that spell normally, and I'm even lower on it whenever it's a Warlock spell. Genie get Thunder Wave, Gust of Wind, Wind Wall, Greater Invisibility and Seeming. So they're kind of these floaty, invisible, trickstery kind of characters that are playing with wind, but also playing with just, like, being a, a mischievous, illusory kind of creature with the Seeming and Greater Invisibility. I like this list a lot. Uh, Thunder Wave is even not the worst thing out the get in the beginning, and you maybe can use Gust of Wind at third level and not feel that bad about it. Afridi yeah, looks... 
Afridi's just the hits from Fiend, so it's Burning Hand, Scorching Ray, <laughs> Fireball, Fire Shield, and Flame Strike. So if you want it, if you like this Fiend spell list, just be an Afridi genie, and you will probably just get better features that you're ha- gonna be happy you're using more frequently. Yeah, uh, objectively better. I, yeah, I wasn't as down on the uh, on the Fiend features as you were, but I, I do recognize that these are much much better. Much better. Uh, and again, you get most of the spells that you really cared about there. Uh, yep. Merit is where we close things out. This gives you Fog Cloud, Blur, Sleet Storm, Control Water, and Cone of Cold. I'm pretty high on like half of these, and that's not a bad place to be for a Warlocks, I don't think. No, uh, Fog Cloud has its uses. Uh, Sleet Storm, I've had a little bit of luck with, but I mean, I, I just every time we mention it, I just have to say it's so big. It's enormous, yeah. And it definitely I is can't. the kind of thing, like, I want this encounter to be over, or I want these people not in this encounter anymore. You just go throw down a Sleet Storm, and they slip around for four rounds, and that's usually really, really good. Yeah. Uh, it's scaling is kind of an issue for it, but, you know, that's every... A lot of different Warlock problems come up there. Uh, Control Water comes up here. I think it's an interesting spell. I don't think it's good. But if you really want to lean to that fantasy, go nuts. Normally, I would be low on this spell list. Normally, I'd be like, eh, these aren't on average that great. A Freeze list is the one that kind of stands out. Genie has a couple of good ones. Dao has, like, two that I think are interesting. It is hard carried by just a list of features that I'm so excited to play with. Um, yeah. We start with Genie's Vessel, which is a book. Compared, like This whole feature probably has more words in it than all of Mastermind Rogue. So it says, <laughs> at, also at first level, your patron gives you a magical vessel that grants you a measure of the Genie's power. The vessel is a tiny object, and you can use it as a spellcasting focus for your Warlock spells. Very cute. You decide what the object is, or you can determine what it is by rolling on this fun little table. It can be an oil lamp, an urn, a ring with a compartment, a stopped bottle, a hollow statuette, or an ornate lantern, which is all, you know, very fun, flavorful stuff. I love that it gives people an on-ramp for flavor. Yeah. Mechanically, though, it also gives you this, because we're not done. When you're touching the vegetable, you can use it in the following ways. More than one way, by the way. Two ways. You can either use bottled or spite. So as an action, you can magically vanish and enter your vessel, which you remain in the space you left. Which remains in the space you left. Sorry. The interior of the vessel is an extra-dimensional space in the shape of a 20-foot radius cylinder, 20 feet high, and resembles your vessel. The interior is appointed with cushions and low tables and is comfortable temperature. While inside, you can hear the area around your vessel as if you were in its space. You can remain inside the vessel for up to a number of hours, equal to twice your proficiency bonus. And you can exit the vessel early if you use a bonus action to leave. If you die, or if the vessel is destroyed. When the egg, when you exit the vessel, you're in an unoccupied space closest to it any objects left in the vessel remain there until carried out and if the vessel is destroyed every object stored there harmlessly appears in white space closest to the vessel's former space once you enter the vessel you can't again leave a long rest oh my god that's a lot of words yes, and we're still have more feature to cover uh no just to clear it up you can stay in the vessel for a limited amount of time but your stuff can stay in there for how long however long you need it as long as you've got the vessel it's a bag of okay. holding and a tiny hut for just you sweet um, we also get Genie's Wrath. For now. For now. You get uh, Genie's Wrath, which is once on each of your turns, when you hit with an attack roll, you can deal an extra damage to the target equal to your proficiency bonus, the type of damage determined by your patron. So bludgeoning it if you're a Dao, Thunder if you're a Jin, Fire if you're a Freedy, or Cold if you're married. This is every turn. You have an attack roll. You deal this extra damage. Guaranteed for the rest of time and space. You just have a bonus two damage on a hit for the first attack you make every turn from now until the rest of time. Normally I'm not that high on this kind of feature. It's stable to everything else yeah. we've gotten so far. I'm all in. Like, yeah, you can now, you get a little bit of payoff, so you're still doing things in combat. Your number's going up slightly more. You have a really sweet little feature, your bottled respite that you can hop into alongside a book of flavor. Uh, it has more text. The vessel's AC is equal to your spell safety C. Its hit points equal to your warlock level plus your proficiency bonus, and it's immune to poison and psychic damage. If it's destroyed or you lose it, you can perform an hour ceremony to get it back. It can, can be performed during a short or long rest, and the previous vessel is destroyed if it still exists. The vessel vanishes in a flare of element power when you die. Okay, what about your stuff? <laughs> your stuff? As it covers in bottled respite, um, if the vessel, any object in the vessel is remains there until it carried out, and if the vessel is destroyed, every object stored there is harmlessly appears in the unoccupied okay. space closer to the vessel's former space. Unlike the tiny chest where they just get absolved under the astral sea. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. that's so many words. It doesn't boil down to that powerful of a feature, but it is a cool as hell feature. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought it was funny when you said the you know, the first part. All right, genie's vessel. You get this vessel, and you go over the different vessels you can get. And you, like, but that's not all. <laughs> if, if that was all, that would suck. There, are, okay. There have been features, Bob. There yeah. have been features where that has been the kind of text we're reading, and we're like, that's it. You get a bottle. Else here? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> it can be a spell focus. That's it. Excuse me. Uh, but no, yeah, this is amazing. 
I think amazing might be a stretch, but it is very fun. Well, I, I mean, all right, not maybe not amazing yet, but I mean, it builds on the vessel, which is what I like. Yes, this entire option sort of built around being a little toolboxy thing. Um, I really love the hidden utility in Bottle of Respite. So having this as an at-will ability that you can just like pop in and out of, um, sorry, a once per long rest ability you can pop in and out of, puts you in a situation where you can use this as an infiltration tool, right? Like if you someone casts some visibility, you go, great, I'm getting my bottle, take me in with you. Sure. Easy peasy. Yeah. You just got smuggled in somewhere. This is an extra dimensional bag of holding that you just get for being a genie warlock that you can just store things in. Now, you only get them out once per long rest, so consider what you put in there, but it is a safe house that you can keep little interesting objects. That's super nifty, right? Yeah, I mean, like, even if you're not invisibilitying someone, you, uh, I'm going to drop the, you know, I have somebody else drop this ring in somebody else's bag when they go through the gate. There you go. Yep. There's also the real use case where it's you're about to die and you go, okay, someone doesn't take damage. I'm gone. I'm in the vessel. I need to be in there until this encounter is over. If the monsters waste actions breaking the vessel, that's kind of not the end of the world for you because you can make a new one and then hopefully your friends can carry you through the rest of the fight. That's a cute little defensive maneuver that you just now have yep. in your back pocket. I'm a big fan. Bonus damage right, on hit, great. it's once per turn. Sure, but it is no matter what you do for the rest of time, as long as you're Eldritch Blasting or being attacked with your Pact of the Web or Pact Blade, you get something from this. And that makes this really easy to put in a variety of directions. Mwah, delicious. Chef's kiss. Not broken by any stretch, but very fun. Agreed. But that's not all. Well, it is all. That's my breath. Yeah. For first level, but uh, now we're moving on to sixth level. Yep. So at sixth level, you begin to take uh, elemental gift is the name of this feature. At sixth level, you begin to take on characteristics of your patron's kind. You now have resistance to a damage type determined by your patron's kind: bludgeoning of its Dao, thunder of its Jin, fire of its Sefrit, and cold of its Merit. In addition, as a bonus action, you give yourself a flying speed of thirty feet that lasts ten minutes, during which you can hover. Once you can use this bonus action a number of times, equal to your proficiency bonus, and get them all back when you finish a long rest. Simple. Oh, yeah. Easy to digest. Very fun. Pretty useful. It's a fly that doesn't break concentration and causes you to fall to your death. Also, it lasts 10 I mean, minutes. And, and it's got resistance, and we've covered so many subclasses recently that offer resistance, like, you know, for, uh, you know, with limited... Ver now, this one, you know, you, you, you pick one and stick with it. However, it's uh, attached to fly. It's attached to a real ability, yeah. right? Like, this is a decent passive boon, and I think where resistances tend to shine their best is whenever you go, oh, I'm suddenly pretty good in this encounter that I otherwise wasn't that, like, you know, super exciting. Like, I, I get to shine because I have fire resistance and I'm wrong against fire things. That doesn't come up very often. When it does, I can even center of attention for a second. This is In the meantime, that. I'm flying around all the and, time. And, yes, yeah. and you have something that actually gives you things to do in every encounter, out of combat exploration. If you want to be a blaster, where better to be than 60 feet directly in the air, raining hell from above? Yeah. I think it's such a cool ability. It's a really concise little fly speed. The fly speeds make such a big deal, and this is a really clean, easy way to give to the option. It's not the most I mean, elegant or, like, revolutionary feature in the world. It's kind of basic, if you ask me. But, hey, basic features that can do this kind of thing, I'm all for. We're at sixth level right now, and I feel like we are, like, better than the capstone of a lot of different other subclasses that we've covered. <laughs> You're just giving me flashbacks. We just did Inquis or uh, Mastermind. My god. The first level feature is better. This first level feature is better than that capstone. Yeah. Um. So, uh, yeah, this is a pretty sweet little ability. Tenth level, we get Sanctuary Vessel. So a tenth level, when you enter your genie's vessel via the Bottle Respite feature, you can now choose up to five willing creatures that you can see within 30 feet of you, and those creatures are drawn into the vessel with you. Cool. As a bonus action, you can eject a number of creatures from the vessel, and everyone ejected is and everyone is ejected if you leave or die or if the vessel is destroyed. In addition, anyone, including you, who remains within the vessel for at least 10 minutes gains the benefits of finishing a short rest. And anyone can add your proficiency bonus to the number of hit points they regain if they spend any hit dice as part of the a short rest there. Yes, 10 minute short rest is especially amazing for warlocks. Not just 10 minute short rest. A 10 minute short rest that happens in an extra-dimensional bu bubble that is contained within a tiny object. Yeah. So it is really easy to set up. You just be like, great, we're going to put this in the corner. We're going to cover it in crap. Everyone goes in the bottle. Even if patrols come by, we are probably fine. Mm -hmm. And you can kind of short rest anywhere. And that is so useful. Um, now, you can only 
do this once a day or once a long rest, right? Long rest still, yes. Yeah. Okay. So this does detract the value of bottle respite. It's like that other tool because you're gonna really often just want your spells back, and this gives you your spells back. Um, so that does. I do wish you got more uses of bottle respite than you do. I also don't think I like this feature is interesting and like catnap ish in that it's a a new way to make warlocks able to function at other tables. I still kind of wish there was something else here. Letting five creatures in is, you know, neat, but it's not super, super powerful. It's not like engaging with the world on that different of an axis. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. This is still definitely better than most sensible features, and I'm not opposed oh, yeah. to that. Um, I'm not complaining about this one at all. Yeah, we have uh, one last feature to do, and oh boy. So we have limited wish. At 14th level, you entreat your patron to grant you a small wish. As an action, you can speak your desire to your genie's vessel, requesting the effect of one spell that is sixth level or lower and is cast of an action. The spell can be from any class's spell list, and you don't need to meet the requirements in that spell, including costly components. The spell simply takes effect as part of this action. Once you use this feature, you can't again until you finish 1d4 long rests. I like that it says including costly components, like it's trying to sell it on you. you know? I mean, at, this is... Any sixth level spell in the game once every adventure ish, mm -hmm. that has got power baked into it, man. This can do anything. Sure. Not yeah, anything. Yeah. This can do a lot of things. And that's fourteenth level. Then uh, when you get your ninth level spells, seventeenth level. And then you yeah. really just get actual factual wish. Right. That's uh, you know, what what are the most powerful things you're doing at sixth level, or or perhaps the costliest things otherwise? Uh, Raising the dead is the costliest to my recollection. Okay. Um, let's check the wizard spell list, shall we? Let's just see what wizard spells have to offer in the sixth level department. See if any of these suit your fancy, shall we? So we've got things like arcane gate. If we need to do long distance teleportation, we got circle of death. If you need a giant ball of damage, uh, we have instant summons. If you want to waste some time and uh, long rest <laughs> material components, global vulnerability is hilarious. Uh, you just make a giant ball that things can't get out of. You can do uh, irresistible dance. It's just a a in a in a pinch, we need a saber die and no save. Great. Irresistible dance, legendary resistance creature. They can't, they, it just happens to them. That's pretty solid. Uh, summon fiend. If you want an hour long duration fiend at your command, that seems like a pretty good option. To just get, just like, yeah, sure. Have a summon fiend real quick. Why not? This is an extra six level spell slot on a character that doesn't get six level spell slots. Like, that's fantastic. This is, can it, it's not just that. It's any sixth level spell that you want. It's any fifth level spell that you want, which can include the reanimation stuff, like the, um, not reanimation, uh, revival stuff. Like, right. Uh, I'm, I'm looking it up right now. Oh, uh, it's, there's Revivify is third level, Raise Dead is the fifth level, right? Raise Dead is fifth level, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, this thing is baller. It is. It's the kind of ability you're going to want to have a player's handbook on you with, and you're going to want to have Tasha's Call and everything on you with, and you're going to want to have those spell lists pulled up because you're going to want to be able to reflect, oh, I can do anything in this situation. What should I do? <laughs> it's like a really ultimate Hail Mary where you can find a spell that will get you out of a sticky situation all the time. Scatter, I think, is in this tier, right? Can you cast Scatter with this thing, or is that seventh <laughs> level? No, that's sixth level. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a that's... real use case with this. Yeah, I don't know. I like it. I don't know how, you know, genuinely powerful it is that I'm I'm going to be using my limited wish. Yeah, I guess I probably would be. It comes back in a, a couple of, if not yeah. this adventure, next adventure. It's probably coming back, right? Yeah. If you have any amount of prolonged downtime between adventures, it will come back. And there will be situations where that spell just does what you need it to. That's pretty oh, good. Yeah. Um, all things yeah. considered, I think this option is really awesome i think it's cool i think it's rich in flavor i think it does everything i'd want a warlock option to do it gives you tons of little useful tools between elemental gift and bottled respite and the different modes of bottled respite attached to limited wish this character will feel like an endless toolbox if you want them to this is the kind of thing where you take pact of the chain you take agonizing blast and um Eldritch Blast is your damage option. You're just grabbing all those invocations that give you free spells, right? You're just grabbing all the little bells and whistles effects that let you do a bunch of different stuff. And this character just comes to the table with, I have a, that's a problem? I have an answer to that problem. Oh, this problem is unanswerable? Don't worry, I have wishes to solve that problem. Like, it, this is the kind of character where you will not run out of things to do ever. Yeah. Also has sub-builds, right? Like, you can really dig in and go, I want to be 
the I want to I'm going to go Dao. I'm going to get resistance to bludgeon damage. I'm going to take the the great sword with back of the blade. I'm going to go in on a tankier build. I'm going to make it some bonus hit points. Be a durable character. Sit down a spike growth. Control an area. You can go in on. I want to be a floaty, tricky illusionist kind of character with a genie. You can just live that fantasy in a really easy way by just sticking to their spell list and kind of sculpting the rest of your build around what you're getting. I think that makes this a easy A option for me. It may not be like overtly unbelievably powerful but everything it does is cool interesting it'll be a blast to play with yeah easy eh? um we haven't covered the uh the sorcerer and wizard subclasses yet so there, there might be something better there but this is i think easily the best subclass we've covered so far in anything uh yeah i mean i don't know i don't think this has any features that are as like game defining cheese wise as assassinate is right like i think we have covered some features that i would consider in a vacuum to have more raw power than this i don't think we've covered a subclass that is well as well designed as interesting and as like fun and well put together as genius yeah i mean yeah there might be instances where assassin's going to you know do something more powerful in a split second but, you know, the rest of the time, they don't have a lot to do. Whereas, like you've been saying the whole time, Genie always has something to do. And a lot of it is powerful. Yeah. Or at least very interesting. Yeah. All right. Great. Two thumbs up. Would recommend. Um, anything else before we close out? Uh, give it a whirl. Yeah. I think it should be a really great time to play with. All right, that was the Genie Warlock. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. Let us know what you think down in the comments below, and uh, like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.